And now we're going to uh, we're going to move to something completely different, which is uh, Kyle Boone. Kyle Boone has been uh, one of our studio artists here at Destination Art for quite a few years, and she's had a career in clinical psychology and neuropsychology, and now is coming back to one of her first loves, namely art. She has always been interested in realistic paintings involving unusual content. Some of her favorite artists are from the mid 1880s to early 1900s, such as Jules Tavernay and William Bradford. They are produced they produced exquisitely realistic paintings of volcanoes, lava, icebergs, and stormy seas. Kyle likes making pictures of tornadoes and storms, fire, lightning, volcanoes and lava, and UFOs because of the drama and the excitement and the shapes and the vivid colors. And now I'd like to uh, introduce Kyle Boone. Here we go. Hello. Yeah. Ah, yes. So, um, as Margaret said, I've been a psychologist and neuropsychologist for 35 years. It's been a wonderful career, but when you take one uh, job or occupational path, it means that you have shut other doors. So now I want to come back to art. When I was growing up, the memo that I got was that I had to have a sensible job that would pay the bills. So I felt that um, I probably couldn't pursue art. I'm not sure that that was true or not, but anyway, at this point, I want to make uh, some more art. The first painting I'm gonna show you, I wanted to do first because we just had a discussion about yes. abstract art. Steve, help me, it's not working. And um, this painting okay. actually is not abstract. Oh, shoot. Wait a minute, I'm having a problem, just a minute. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. How do I get it into the slideshow? I'm seeing it, Margaret. I see it on my yeah, screen. I know, but I can't make it advance. Oh. There we go. Sorry about that. So go back to the other one. Okay. Whoops. Oh boy, something is not working right here. And you said there's one before this? Yes. Hmm. Okay, that's it. There we go. So this particular painting actually is not abstract, but uh, this is of my daughter Galen, and we had gone to a steakhouse in downtown LA, and there was some textured glass that she walked behind. And I thought it looked incredible, and I photographed it on my cell phone. And this painting is very true to that photograph. So uh, for those of you who want to do a particular kind of abstract art, just put your subject matter behind textured glass. And it will give you something like this. Hmm. If I could have the next uh, slide. So I have really liked making paintings of tornadoes. And I think it's because it's very sculptural. But also, I think it uh, startles you. When you see it, you think, oh, that should not be. And certainly, tornadoes are part of nature, but they're rare. There's also a bit of danger about it. And uh, so there's something about that that I really like. Two years ago, my husband and I went on a storm chasing trip for photographers. We left from Denver. We went to nine states in six days. And on the Monday that we set out, the tour guide said that we, have, we had to be in South Dakota on that Thursday. So from their algorithms and their plotting of the weather, they said we have to be in South Dakota um, on June 28. And sure enough, on June 28, we saw eight different tornadoes and it was truly incredible. And uh, next year we intend to go back. If I can have the next slide. Here's another picture of a tornado. If I could have the next slide. The next slide. The next slide. 
The next slide. So I don't just do tornadoes, but I like things like lightning, lava, fire. If I can have the next slide. And the next slide. I also like really unusual cloud formations. And when you go storm chasing, you're not gonna see very many tornadoes. But what you will see are a lot of fabulous cloud formations. And unfortunately, we don't see too many of those here in California. But if I could have the next slide. This actually was based on a photograph that my husband took off the coast of um, San Pedro here. So on occasion, we do get pretty incredible cloud formations. The next slide. I also like things like uh, spaceships and UFOs. So I think I like being startled that you have a landscape and then there's something in the landscape that does not belong. If I could have the next slide. You can have the next slide. So I thought I would come back to Jules Tavernier and uh, talk about a couple of artists who I've really liked. And the period of art that I like actually is from the 1800s. It's considered the romantic style, very vivid colors, uh, very dramatic content. And back in the 1800s, they really didn't have much in the way of photography. So when newspapers would publish articles or magazines would publish articles, they had to hire artists to illustrate the stories. And Jules Tavernier did that, and he lived in Northern California, but he also spent a lot of time in Hawaii. And if you ever had the chance to go to the Honolulu Museum of Art, they have fabulous paintings by Tavernier. If I could have the next slide. So more paintings by Tavernier, the next slide. Very rich, uh, dramatic colors. The next slide. The next slide. And I really like this. This is also a painting by Tavernier. And I, again, I like the combination of a lush, rich landscape with something in it that does not belong. If I can have the next slide. And then William Bradford also was an illustrator and a very famous artist. And he would go on expeditions because when you think about it, when people would travel the globe, they didn't have cameras. So they would hire artists to go with them and then the artists would make sketches, go back home and then produce the art. So William Bradford would go on expeditions to the Arctic and make sketches and then do the paintings when he got home. If I, if I can have the next slide. So more paintings by Bradford, the next slide. And again, I like the combination of a beautiful landscape and then something in it that looks like it does not belong. The next slide. The next slide. The next one. Hold on. <clears throat> Hold on. And then the last slide. So we have a lot of Zoom meetings these days. And so for me, the fantasy Zoom meeting would be to have William Bradford and Jules Tavernier, and then I would listen in on what they had uh, to say. And the photograph of me is a selfie that I took on the storm chasing trip. And that is a tornado behind me in the selfie. Wow, thank you, Kyle, that's fantastic. Thank you. Were you ever you. frightened uh, being uh, in the storm chasing vehicle and, and, and being so close to a tornado? Well, that's interesting that the closest we were uh, was probably about a mile. And you actually don't chase the tornadoes, but they have all the, they have a radar system in the front seat and they're tracking the weather and the tornadoes. So they are actually uh, triangulating to bring you up close to the tornado, but you're not uh, chasing behind it or you're not running toward it. <coughs> and I learned something really interesting that when the sun is behind the tornado, then the tornado appears black. But if the sun is behind you as you're watching the tornado, then the tornado is white. So we didn't actually have scary times so much related to the tornadoes, except one time we did turn and look to the side of the van and there was a tornado. 
and the driver did in fact drive very quite, uh, quickly backwards to get us away from that. But the uh, scarier things were that tornadoes always have as a part of the chemistry or the physics of tornadoes, they have um, hail and a very large hail. So uh, when we were in, I think, uh, North Dakota or perhaps Wyoming, that we were behind some cars and we were trying to get away from the uh, weather and the hail, but the cars in front of us did not understand what they needed to do, so we got trapped. And in fact, it broke the windshield, it dented the hoods, and the driver of the van told us to put our jackets up at the windows so that if the windows broke, we would not get sprayed with glass. The other thing that they were very worried about is bolts of lightning. So those tend to accompany tornadoes as well. And uh, so they want to make sure that you're not a target from the, uh, for the lightning. Okay. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for sharing with us about your art. And I know everyone who comes into Destination Art, when they see your studio, they're fascinated. So we're glad to have some of the story behind it. Thank you so much for, for sharing. Thank you.